We're going to now look at the next set of longitudinal clunks, which is 12, 13, 14, and 15. And the most important ones are um, 14 and 15. The mylar plan gives us the top of the lower deck beams. So the first thing we're going to do is try and establish that line. And then from that, we will figure out the top of 15 and then 14 and go from there. So this is the top of the lower deck clamp or deck beam as it's referred to. And you'll see that 15 is slightly recessed into it. So the mylar plan, this is the, the, the line that the mylar plan gives us. So we'll have to deduct to get down to the top of 15. Um, but before we do that, um, one of the issues that I had when I installed the last set of streaks was I found that the frames were actually quite uneven. And in fact, I was not very happy um, with the run of the streaks I had put them in um, because my clamps tended to clamp them onto the frames and the streaks followed the, the frames. So I got a, a little bit of a, a wavy line. That made me go back to the model and resand the entire um, internals of the model. And I'm glad I did that because now the planks are going to fit relatively flat on the frames. Uh, if I was going to be showing this model, I'd actually rip out everything that I'd done and redo them. But again, just to remind you that I am sealing all this stuff up and the installation of all the internal boards is ready for my learning and my understanding of how this board, how these ships were built. Although you can't really see what was there before, this is a 4 inch button um, that I had left over and you see I'm getting really a very nice um, lay of the, um, of the plank against the frame. So that's really a huge, huge improvement. And I really wish I had done this earlier on. We've set up the drafting table with a fixed ruler, which is clamped to the bottom of the keel. And then we have our square, which I can put on it and tie it back to the frame. And then, of course, I have the caliper, the veneer caliper, which allows me to take the measurement very accurately off, off the plan. The original method I had for um, getting the measurements for the high gauge was to come on the model, take the measurement, and then try and establish it on the high gauge. But the way I built the high gauge, I couldn't get the uh, veneer caliper right inside against the marker. So what I did is took um, a little square that I had put a piece of cardboard on it and I can easily put it against the height gauge and it works just great. So to get the mark all I need to do is put the cardboard on the plan, mark the height, put it on the height gauge and adjust the, the marker accordingly. Now I can transfer that mark onto the model. The first one we're going to do is um, forward count 11, the inside diameter. It's very easy for us to find. Put the mark on the cardboard piece. And we have our first two marks. So now all we have to do is repeat that um, with a whole series of marks inside the model and establish that line. Well, this is really a lot of fun. I'm going back and forth, checking, checking, checking. And then after I'd completed the whole exercise, I decided, you know, measure, measure twice, cut once. 
So I went back again and found, oh dear, it's a variation. I couldn't understand, so I changed it again. And then I decided a third time, let me go back and check it again, only to find that the first set was correct. And what had happened was the rule I had on my plan had shifted. And that's what caused the variation. In the process of drawing the line, again, I found two high spots. This one in the bow and this one in the stern. So I'm going to have to take the model back out and sand these down flat. So even though you've drawn the lines, you need to continuously check. And the key dimensions that we need to check are the bow, the middle, and the stern. So again, I come back and I'm checking. And we see that that's spot on. Of course, the Nautical Research Guild is our greatest asset because the in the case of the Swan, there are quite a number of of bills and you can go into those look at the photographs maybe even see the discussion relating to the particular piece that you're having trouble with and get to understand it as a supplement to what you're reading in the in the swan practicum books these photographs came from various members of the guild's build of the swan and i genuinely can't remember where they came from so please forgive me although this looks very straightforward i may first want to tell you that it's actually taken me well over a week to establish this line and be comfortable that the line is the correct in the correct spot i'm going to operate contrary to the instruction that david has in the book in that i'm going to install 15 14 13 and 12 because that's the only way I'm 100% sure that I can get the deck line established at the correct height. The line that we establish here is the top of the deck beam. And we know that the deck beam is 6 inches thick and it recesses in 1 inch. So we've established a button here which is 5 inches thick and we're going to install 15 under this, under this button. You'll notice that my clamps have been modified, they're slightly wider and in some cases um, the clamp is shorter so that um, it allows me to put the, the strip right up against the button. And if I had, here's a lower frame, if I had a clamp on this frame it would have pulled the, the plank right up against the frame causing a distortion. So now with these wider clamps I'm going to have um, a much more even uh, installation of the, of the strip. This is where the join is. Again, remember, it's slightly different than what was suggested by David. Well, we're taking the plunge and sticking the piece on. And hopefully I don't get a rude note from Greg saying, ah, you got it all screwed up. And my method of using the blow dryer continues to work. Um, I got a nice, really nice bend out of this. Um, the front and the back, I may very well cut curved pieces, but I'm very happy with this method of achieving my bends. And here are my clamps again, my new clamps coming in invaluable. I've had a little problem with them, and that some of them I've lost a few of them because the grain runs the wrong way. So I'm going to make up some new ones with the grain at cross purposes to the, um, to the width. Of course, I continue to write down each of these critical steps. I find that's the only way I can prevent myself making mistakes. And now one of the key challenges where 15 meets the stern. I have located it. Uh, six inches up on the fourth piece of the wing transom and it goes right across the, f the first um, aft can frame um, number one. It's tapered to 10 inches at the stern and reduced in thickness from roughly about seven feet back down to three inches.
Now to the bow and establishing the lower deck beam. And you can see it's the line is right here. But when we transfer that um, line to the model on the Stemson, we find there's a little problem. The error is just under two inches, so I don't think it's anything major to worry about. We've put the, the button in place and you can see it's lined up with all the marks. I have to put it down just a little bit. This was my first attempt at cutting out a bent piece and um, not quite correct, so we'll make sure we correct that on the next piece. And perhaps the most important thing to remember is to take a template on the inside for the next piece, number 14, that is going to come. And this is the corrected piece. And it is, it looks like a perfect fit. So what we're going to do is make up two of these, soak them, and then bend and stick them in place. Having cut the piece to shape and then wetting and blow drying and pulling it in, the piece is actually holding its shape beautifully against the bow. And so it's not necessary to put the normal clamps that we had been using to force the, the plank against the frames. Here is a combination of cutting a curved piece, which you would have seen before, and then that curved piece being heated into place. It really is fantastic. And where you see the benefit of that is, when I fit it in, it's not under any pressure. It fits perfectly against the frame and only requires a very slight pressure um, to hold it in place. And we just leave that to dry. Um, the only comment I can make is the one thing we did not do is this Strake 15 was supposed to be 5 inches thick with what he calls a letdown um, from the top of the Strake to the bottom of the Strake from 5 to 4 inches. I tried to do that and found it very difficult to do over the length of the piece. So I've installed it at 4 inches and I'll pay the cost. I'll pay the criticism for doing that. This is where the breast hook goes and you can see they both line up. This is full size as per the instruction. There's no reduction here. Um, so again it shows us the key the key uh, attachment point um, for 15 as we come back. So now we can start adding in 14, 13 and 12 here. Another milestone under our belt as we bring this to a close. Um, it went a little over length, but I didn't want to break this into two parts. Um, the next two sections, which is 14, 13 and 12, um, we'll do them as one because it really is following um, the line that is established by 15. And um, it will follow the same sequence as happened before. So it'll be nothing new or nothing that challenging. So we'll see you in the next video.